And welcome back to Beirut Food. Today we're in Tripoli, which is the opposite direction of Sur, which was south. Now we're up north, second biggest city in Lebanon. There's so much to discover today, so many hidden gems, so much good street food that is unique to Tripoli or Trablus, as we call it in Arabic. This day is going to be incredible. <laughs> Trablos went through a lot of negative events recently, especially with the protests and the poverty, but we're not here for this today. We're here to show you what makes the city so unique, fascinating, and capture what it really is. A labyrinth of wonders. The city dates back to approximately the 14th century before Common Era, and because of that, it has an insane amount of history and culture to offer. Full of khans, energetic souks, narrow streets, genuine people, the handicraft industry, and beautiful historic sites, it is a must visit. You won't believe how different it is from Beirut. But apart from being so fueled culturally and historically, it is Trablus's gastronomy heritage that truly is insane. It is said to be the capital of street food in the country, and it is internationally renowned for its Arabic streets. People around the world consider food as one of the main reasons to visit the city. So let's see for ourselves what those hidden gems have to offer today. And that's how the adventure began. We started the day walking towards the legendary souk of Trablus to find a place that this morning opened pretty early. So right now we're in the old souks of Trablos, we're in a restaurant called Akra. Akra is famous for their dishes based on beans and peas, full fette hummus, and probably the best msabha I've ever eaten. They still make it the traditional way here. Apart from the fact that the location is really cool and traditional, they have quite a unique hummus. So this is a hummus that's very special, you can only find it in Akra. The owner would bring back some Asian spices from Malaysia when he used to live there, and would add them to the hummus with a mix of nuts. The owner of the place called it the hummus melisi which means the hummus from Malaysia. Nowhere else you can find this. The dishes here are served with a mix of juicy fruits and veggies, and the fresh bread comes from a nearby oven to accompany these innovative dishes. And here you go, you have this diversity of dishes to share, but with a twist. Continuing our exploration of the souk early in the morning, most of the shops and restaurants are still closed, but at one specific point, boom! You snap your fingers and the souk is suddenly full. What's so magical about a souk is how everyone does their own thing within the general chaos. Deeper in the narrow streets, another hidden gem is awaiting. The mughrabiyye sandwich. Mughrabiyye is usually eaten as a home dish, tabkha as we call it. But in the specific place of Trablos, they make a sandwich out of it. So right here is one of the only places in the whole world where you can eat mughrabiyye sandwich. The three main ingredients are onions, chickpeas, and pearl couscous, which is basically fatter semolina. It's kind of like the Moroccan couscous, but the grains are a bit thicker. So this is the famous sandwich. Everybody speaks about it here. Let's taste it. Mm. Mm, the taste is really different from the normal mughrabiyye because they add beetroots and pickles in the sandwich. It's a small sandwich, yeah, but yeah. it fills you up really good. Next destination okay. was a furun or oven in Arabic that makes bread and kaki. Mm. Young okay. or old, everyone enjoys a kaki in the morning. So here they do something that's very traditional, it's called kaki, and they put sesame seeds on some dough, then put it in the oven for it to puff up, and here you go, you got a kaki. What's really surprising in every footin I saw is the dedication and workflow of the bakers. And it's kind of normal since a lot of people depend on them for their breakfast. So it's a kaki that just went out of the oven. It's really hot, <laughs> but let's taste it. <laughs> I just burned myself. <laughs> cheers, cheers. <laughs> the sesame changes everything on the bread. It gives it so much more taste. This is typical from Trablos. On the streets, you can find carob juice. It's made out of carob pods. And basically, you can find some all around the city. It's super cheap, it's only 500 Lebanese pounds, and you can just find it in the corner of a street like this. Wow, the taste is really strange. I never tasted this like this before. It's so refreshing. Another one? Round two. Uh, right now, we're in front of Matram Sa'ade, which means the restaurant of happiness, literally. So here they serve a specialty. It's called Sfihat Kafta. Well, you can see behind me, this is how many people come for the Sfihat Kafta. So here's where everything starts. Grab some Lebanese flatbread, then spread some kafta on it. Kafta is basically a mix of meat, onion, and parsley. Then it goes straight into the oven right there, and bam, it's ready to serve with some spicy sauce. So I've been told by the guy who owns the place, the best way to eat the Sfihat is to put a bit of lemon on it, a bit of hot sauce. Mm, not bad. It's amazing. Then we went to a place called Hattari, which means on the road, not on the actual road, but on the road, the restaurant. When you enter the place, you know you're onto something really original and funny. The whole concept is unique. Hattari's specialty is shawarma. It's putting the oil on it. That's where the magic happens. It's the kitchen. What's interesting here is that they use two kinds of bread. 
Maru and the normal Lebanese flat bread. I never saw this anywhere else. You already know how it goes. Garlic sauce called tomb, pickles, chicken, fries, roll, and here you go. That's how you make the shawarma basket served with fries, garlic sauce, and veggies. And that's where it gets fun. They hang the basket on a motorized system that brings the food straight to your table. It's so awesome and so funny. So I'm gonna teach you a little life hack today with shawarma. What you do is grab a little potato, a little french fry, and then you dip it into the tomb, the garlic mix, and then you spread it on top of the shawarma, and then you take a huge bite. Mm. That's how you eat the shawarma. <laughs> Trablos is really famous for its street food, especially the kake. And kake Abu Daniel is said to make one of the best kake trablusiers. It is made with the kake bread itself, melted cheese, and a spiled katsuma. The whole thing is grilled. But Abu Daniel likes to diversify and adds his own twist to it and uses all kinds of ingredients to make anyone who comes here satisfied. This is crazy! When you see the stand on the street, you don't expect much, but the queue here often gets huge and for the right reasons. We finally step into the grounds of the beasts. And now we're in front of Beitna, which is probably one of the best culinary experiences you can have in Trablus. So let's start off by going in and exploring the inside of the kitchen. Let's do this. Here in Beitna, there's a clear level up on many aspects. So after going to all those different street food places, you can clearly notice the huge range of dishes Baitna offers. The diversity of stuff here is really incredible. Apart from already making most of what we already ate today, including the sfihat kafta or a selection of sandwiches, they also make a great variety of tabkhat, mashewe and meze. Really, nothing is missing here. They also deliver most of their foods. We call our home food tabkha. Restaurants usually don't make them unless it's for a meal of the day. But here you can find all kinds of tabkhat, from rice to cream-based, fully cooked meals. Then there's mashewe. We call mashewe all types of grilled meat with veggies. But in Lebanon, we also eat the meat raw, and it's called neye. And Baitna offers a very fine selection of that. In my opinion, Baitna's secret weapon is the quality of their meat. And it's no wonder, since they also have a supermarket right next to the restaurant, focused mainly on meat-based ingredients, and have even their own brand that they sell in packages. And finally, the meze. Meze are small plates you can share, but they fill you up so quickly, and their diversity is crazy from hummus to tabbouleh, fatouche, wara'ana, baba ghanouj, etc. What's really cool about the meze is that it can all be shared and you can taste the diversity of the Lebanese cuisine. Crafting a meze is an art of its own. And this is the perfect example of a good meze table. Looking at this abundance on this table, I was really in admiration of the generous quantity of food and especially of the meticulousness of Beitna. What I appreciate the most out of this restaurant is the attention to detail. Look at this, for example. This is not essential to put but someone took the time and effort to craft this little thing. And you can find so many small details like this on the table that are added just for this little plus that makes the whole difference in a restaurant. Beitna means our house in Arabic, and it's not named in vain. The hospitality here is truly exceptional. Combined with diversity and precision, it makes the ideal destination for a family lunch in Trablos. Yes! <laughs> and finally, we arrive to Halab. Halab is a Lebanese sweets establishment that is based in Trablos but famous worldwide. Today we're visiting Asr al halo the castle of sweets, where the sweets are made. It is considered one of Trablos' most renowned landmarks and symbol of tradition. It's an institution that's five generations old that opened back in 1881. And what's incredible here is how the Halab family keeps on maintaining the tradition of their renowned sweets while at the same time innovating in their crafts with top quality standards and perfectionism. In my opinion, it's the best Arab sweets I've tasted. Wow. It's so chewy. After spending some time with Zahir, who's part of the Halab family, here are the takeaways of this fascinating institution. Here's the behind the scenes of all the sweets they're making. So we're gonna go and explore a bit and see how it's made. Rose water and orange blossom water are the basic ingredients of the Lebanese sweets. Then they can be divided into different categories. Ash'awet, baklawas, and knefes. But here they also make ma'mul, cake and pastries, confectionaries, and ice cream. No matter what category, each sweet is literally a pleasing piece of art for the eyes and the mouth. When you come here, you're in for discovering flavors and textures you've never tasted before. Let's start with the ash'awit. Znu the Sit is a perfect example to see how much dedication and attention is put into the craft of Lebanese sweets. They're all handmade. 
In a nutshell, it's made out of ashta cream that they roll into phyllo dough, but in a very specific way for the ashta to be perfectly sealed. They're then placed in a deep fryer and into two different types of extremely hot oils for a very specific type of fried texture until they become golden. And finally, they're immersed into sugar syrup and ready to serve with rose jam and a sprinkle of pistachios. And then you can add even more sugar syrup to znoo the sit. In my opinion, the ashta they make is one of their biggest advantages and it has a direct impact on the quality of the ashawet. So this is mafruki. It's still hot, it's still fresh. And basically, it's made out of caramelized semolina, fresh cream, almonds, and flour jam. <laughs> Wow, man. So behind me you have the baklava family. The base of it is vermicelli that's deep fried. It's not vegan, but you have two options that are vegan. Pumpkin pie and the same thing but dry. And even their ice creams is one of the best I've ever had in Lebanon. And trust me, I know my ice creams. So this is an ice cream of ashta. Yani feed more. What can I say more than this? Look at this, look at this. So they rolled the ashta ice cream into some pistachios and then they put it in the candy floss and it's ready to eat. Mmm. I'm not exaggerating, best avocado ice cream I've ever tasted. By maintaining the tradition alive, keeping on innovating and following accurate recipe methods, that's how you get world-renowned handmade sweets and a mandatory place to visit when you come to Trablos. And that was it for today. We had finished our tour of the hidden gems in Trablos. And this marks the end of the day in Trablos. It was an incredible day. My stomach is about to explode because it is full of happiness and fulfillment. What is truly insane about Trablos is that despite how much it has suffered in recent times, it remains a vibrant city full of life, of happy and genuine kind people, of incredible diversity, of hospitality, of surprising contrasts, and obviously a city that is an absolute gold mine when it comes to food. It defied all our expectations. From the nine places we visited today, we can affirm that the Trablos food innovations and creative twists were really fascinating, from the ways the food is made and served, to how they base their know-how on ancient traditions. And that is thanks to each person from the city working hard in their crafts to survive through the hard times and contribute to a better and more peaceful future for the city. Hope you enjoyed the vlog and see you next time. Peace!